I'm going to show y'all right now that there is color in the Bible because the Christian church doesn't tell you these things. They don't tell you there's lineage, heritage, and all that stuff. They just teach that everybody's one, that we're all the same. But if you look around in our communities, you can tell that we're not all the same. You can tell that our people suffer the worst more than any other nation, all right? We're going to show you that in the Bible. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now he said he formed man of the dust of the ground. Who was the first, the first man that was created? The first man, who was it, according to the Bible? Adam, correct. It says he formed Adam of what? Uh, excuse me. Formed man of the dust of the ground. And when you look at the dust, when you go into the soil, it's dark, right? It's a dark brown, it's a dark black. It's not light, it's dark, right? So. Adam was a black man according to the Bible. And remember, everybody came from Adam. Get that real quick. I want to show you that. Everybody did spring from Adam. That's true. So everybody on this nation was dark skinned when it all started. So there's color in the Bible. That's one thing we're not being taught in church. All right? Was it Second Ezra? <laughs> Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. All right, right there says, out of every, out of Adam come all men. All men come from Adam. So there's no such thing as uh, Adam and somebody else and then people generated from somebody else, from that, that person. Every man on this earth descends from Adam. Jeez. Correct? And Adam was a dark-skinned man, just like the Bible says. So that's how we know that Adam was a black man. Okay? Uh, let me get something else for you. Uh, give me uh, Solomon. Let me show you that real quick. Let me show you one more color scripture. And I'm going to get my brother right here. You said you're a Muslim, correct? Okay, cool. How long you been into that, bro? Yeah, like seven years. All right, what made you get into that? Parents. Parents? Okay. Get that. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. Now, this is Solomon, the prophet. King David's son. What did he say? I am black, but comely. He said, I am black and beautiful. That's what the Bible said. But our people are taught that our color is disgusting. Our color is beneath everybody else. The way that we're made is not, not the thing, you know, it's not the trend. But God says the way we're made is over everybody else. Now, I'm going to teach y'all one other thing too now. Because Christianity is, to me, Christianity is the most confusing religion. Like, it's right, confusion, it all right? <laughs> it teaches that God deals with everybody, he loves everybody, correct? But that's also what the Quran teaches, correct? That everybody can be saved, all nations. All right, but here's the thing about it. Does the Quran give me um give me Habakkuk? Give me Habakkuk too. Now, who does who do y'all worship? Like, do y'all worship the creature, the uh, God, or the, the stone, or the moon? Okay. So um, if you're a Sunni Muslim, then you'd be praying straight to Allah. Just, right, right. He's saying you got a straight passageway to talk to him. You don't have to go to the fight. Understood. Talk. So that's Sunni. What's the other one? The other one is Shiite. They kind of like uh, radical, so they pray to the stone. So they really don't pray to a person who's more like an idol. Okay. So which one would you be? I'm Sunni. Sunni. So you don't. So do you go to the Kaaba? like the the Mecca. Do you have to go to the Mecca. Once well, a year. No, you don't have to do that to pray. You don't have to do that. You can pray wherever you want to pray. Doesn't but is that like a custom? Does it does it say that you in your lifetime that you have to go? They say that you should, yeah. It's pressed that you should go, yeah. Okay, and they come from uh, from Abraham, if I'm not correct, right? Yeah. Alright, read this. Habakkuk chapter two, verse eighteen. And what we're proving right now is um the Bible is clear in what it says. We don't worship any creation. We only worship the creator, okay? And we know in other religions, they go into, like like the brother said, he said they, they kiss the stone, they walk around it and worship it, the moon, and some, some facets of it. Go ahead. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? So it says, what profit the graven image? Why are people looking up to an image instead of the person that made that image, right? Go ahead. The molten image and a teacher of lies. That teacher of lies goes in not just the cobblestone, but it goes into that cross in Christianity. We can knock it all out. Everything that's created, we are not to worship. Because when you look at that cross, how did Jesus Christ die? What did he die on? Now, where in the Bible does it say to make a cross and idolize it? Put it on your cars, on your necklace, on your church. Stand it up. It doesn't say that, right? Now, if, if, if I were to take a pillow and, and murder somebody that you love with a pillow, and everybody started wearing a pillow necklace, how would that make you feel? 
Hey, you you saw that the item that killed your family member that I killed. Right, so why do people take the cross that killed your Lord and Savior and wear that like it's a badge of honor? Make it plain. That doesn't make any sense, right? All right, so back to the common stone. So you say don't worship it, right? Well, we got to get back to what the uh, Quran is. The Quran comes from the Bible. It does take... Yes. Right. So what I want to go to now, go to Deuteronomy 28 and 64, and then we're going to speak on this because the big misconception is that God is dealing with everybody in the Bible. So if God, if we can prove in this Bible that he's not dealing with every, everybody, then the Quran cannot be true because the Quran says it loves everybody. Everybody can make, make it, everybody can hold hands and everything, right? But that's what people say Christianity. Read this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Now this is talking about the so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans. The Israelites, according to the Bible. He says he's going to take that nation and scatter them all across the earth. Because they broke the commandments of God. We're going to see what happens when they got scattered. And there thou... There, wherever they were put to serve slavery. Thou shalt serve other gods. We were made to serve other gods. This is according to the Bible, right? It says we will serve other gods in these lands. Why would we serve other gods? Because we'd be serving the gods of our oppressors. Right. Like white Jesus. We serve white Jesus because we we was under oppression to the white man, right? We serve Allah because we was um, in subjection to the Arabs. Wherever we were, if we was in the Chinese or whatever, whoever they worship, we celebrated that God. Buddha, Jackie Chan, whoever it was, we worshiped them. Go ahead. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. It says, our fathers didn't know these guys because when we were serving the Most High God, he was with us. It's only when we started going away, doing what the other nations did, that's when God says, okay, you don't want to serve me? Now you're going to serve the other guys, but in your captivity. Go ahead. Even wood. Even wood. What, like we just talked about, that Christianity, that cross, the wood. And stone. And we were made to serve that stone, which is the um, Kaaba stone. Those are the two biggest religions in the world. That's what you were talking about earlier. You talking about Christianity and one was the, um, the, the Muslims. Right. So these are two things that have our people in oppression. All right. So now let's get this straight. Go to, um, what you got? Get that. Get that one too. Jeremiah 3 and 2. Get that one. All right. Because I'm going to prove right now, according to the Bible, that our people were under subjection to the Arabs. And we were sitting there and learning everything from them. Just like today in America, we learn white Jesus. We learn blonde your hair. We learn women wear pants. You can be a feminist. You can be 50-50. We learned that in America. All right, sis, call that number on the back. Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 2. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. And the ways hast thou set for them. It says we have set for them. Go ahead. As the Arabian in the wilderness. As the Arabians in the wilderness, we sat to them. When it means to sit to somebody, that means you're, you're learning under, the, un, under them. All right? Now, you, you, you're in subjection to them. Everything that they give you, you have to take it. All right? So it says we sat to them in the wilderness. That's where we was in captivity. Go ahead. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms. With thy whoredoms. That's what we kept on serving their gods. We was made to serve the cobblestone. We was made to serve Allah. We was made to do partake into their, their customs. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example.